Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, everybody. Our lecture today about the principles of head and neck PET CT scan. The term of head and neck cancer generally encompasses malignant neoplasm of soft tissue origin of the oral cavity, lip, nasal cavity, paranasal sinuses, pharynx, pharynx, and salivary glands as well as sarcomas arising in this region. The skin is sometimes included as well in this classification. About 95% of tumors are squamous cell carcinomas, or variants of it, arising from the mucosa or adenocarcinomas from the associated secretory gland. Infection by human papilloma virus is recognized as an important predisposing condition for the development of the cell carcinoma of the head and neck. The role of PET-CT in this situation with the radio-labeled FDG plays an increasingly important role in this pre-treatment staging, radiotherapy planning, treatment response, assessment, and post-therapy follow-up in various of head and neck sequimus cell carcinoma. SDG PET CT is superior to contrast enhanced computed CT and mag uh, magnetic resonance imaging in this, uh, especially in the detection of the carcinomas of unknown primary origin of the cervical lymph node involvement and in the identification of the distant metastasis. The first question, what are the factors that determine the initial treatment? There are a lot of factors. We incubate in two main characteristics. The first one related to the tumor characteristics, especially the size, location, histology, and nodal or metastatic involvement. The patient-related characteristic factor, especially the age and general condition of the patient. And also there is a factor depending on availability of the treatment, availability of the a machine of the treatment or diagnostic machines which is available in such countries. Most patients present with complicated locally advanced disease requiring multidisciplinary treatment plans based on variable combination of surgery, radiotherapy, and chemotherapy. The second, uh, the second question, what are the indications to perform PET CT in head and neck tumor? The first important indication is the pre-treatment staging. The numinous of reports on initial staging indicates that the sensitivity of PET-CT is equivalent to or superior to that of MRI and CT scan. In comparison to morphological imaging methods, especially CT or MRI, PET-CT is particularly advantageous in, allow in the following and allowing first one assessment of neck lymph nodes, potential distant metastasis, synchronous secondary primaries in a single examination. The sensitivity and the specificity of the FDG PET in staging nodal disease is about 79 to 85% and 84 to 86 respectively, whereas the sensitivity and the specificity of conventional diagnostic tests, either MRI, CT scan, or ultrasound, were 75% and 79% respectively. Approximately about 4 to 15.4% of patients with head, neck, sequimus cell carcinomas have distant metastasis at initial presentation. The most common site of metastasis, including the lungs, bone, and abdomen. Whole body FDG test CT is more accurate than the conventional imaging for detection of metastatic foci. In addition, the FDG test CT detects distant metastasis or a second primary tumor in up to 15% patients with sequimus cell carcinoma which can significantly alter the treatment plan. In 2017, 
the National Comprehensive Central Northern Network updated the clinical practice guidelines for PET CT imaging of the head and neck cancer and suggested the use of PET CT for initial staging of the oral cavity, oropharyngeal, hypopharyngeal, glottic, and supraglottic cancers for stage three and stage four disease, as well as immunocausal melanoma and nasopharyngeal carcinoma. This is an example of a patient, 61 years old man, recently diagnosed with epiglottic carcinoma and presented in the transaxial CT scan, transaxial PET, and effusion of PET CT. There is a focal of intense hypermetabolism in the right epiglottis associated with bilateral cervical lymph nodes. Another case. 75 years old, a man with oropharynx carcinoma with bilateral cervical metastasis, especially in the right side with multiple uh, metastasis in the bone, lungs, and abdomen. With, uh, there is also there is a foci of uh, uh, lung nodules in the uh, right and the left upper loop. The third question, what is the synchronous lesion? This is an important term which can alter the type of treatment, alter the plan of the treatment. The most common areas of, for second primary tumors are the lungs and aerodigestive tract. The overall incidence of the coincidence secondary primary tumors is about five to 10 percent. PET has an accuracy of 80 percent for coincidental lung lesions. PET CT detects 84 of synchronous primaries and therapy was changed in 80% of patients due to the detection of the synchronous primary. In another study, the PET-CT was superior to pan-endoscopy for the detection of synchronous primaries, and the authors suggest that the extent of the endoscopy can be reduced to area of the primary tumor if the PET-CT is negative. This is two examples of synchronous a tumor, the primary lesion in the neck, and there is a synchronous lung cancer. This is coronal PET in patients with right parotid malignancies, which is seen in the arrow demonstrated as synchronous in the left upper lung with mediastinal uh, lymph node, also as a metastatic lesion. The uptake in the thyroid gland. Uh, this is uh, an uh, accidental, but not a specific, related, to, related mostly to thyroiditis. This is another patient with cervical lesion and associated also with uh, colonic sigmoid uptake uh, related to sigmoid carcinoma. <clears throat> also, the head and neck uh, cancers, most of the sites of head and neck use the TNN staging, including the lip, oral cavity, oropharynx, hypopharynx, larynx, and salivary glands. Uh, the TNN staging is most important in this situation. Here, what is the rule of PET in the nodal metastasis? It's one of the most important indications and uses of PET CT in the head and neck is the detection of nodal metastasis. Also, PET CT is more accurate than CT or MRI for nodal metastasis. It does not detect very small metastatic deposits, which size less than 5 million. Neck dissection in patients with negative bed may be performed on a pre-test likelihood of metastatic disease, like, for example, based on T stage and histopathological features. In patients with T4 disease, and the false negative results are more likely, and PET is less helpful in this situation. PET is more helpful in patients with T1 to T3 disease. Use of PET in this population can reduce the probability of occult neck metastasis to less than 15%. In addition, false positive results are not infrequent and more common in the contralateral neck side and in a clinical and zero neck. <clears throat> Pathological confirmation should be considered for test positive nodes. 
that city may have the most potential value where the probability of the occult nodal metastasis is higher. As for example, in patients with oral or oropharyngeal carcinoma. Here, the sensitivity of PET is in this setting is variable, ranging from 33 to 67%. The second most indication is the radiotherapy planning. The importance of the PET CT in the planning of the radiotherapy in head and neck squamous cell carcinoma patients has been extensively demonstrated. The FDG PET CT defines the tumor volume more definitively than the diagnostic CT scan without contrast medium. FDG PET modifies staging and radiotherapeutic planning in up to one third of untreated head and neck squamous cell carcinoma patients. One of the most common studies, which is called Abromoc Italy Group, compared the staging modifications determined by the FDG PET CT in 102 patients with any treated primary head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. The PET CT findings imaging lead to modification in the radiotherapy planning in 14 of 102 patients in a, person, in a percentage of 13.7%. Also, such FDG PET CT improves the selection of candidates for curative and palliative radiotherapy. The potential applications of the PET in radiotherapy planning are as following. First one, co-registration of the PET and the treatment planning by CT scan, detection of additional distance metastases by the PET CT, delineation of radiotherapy, uh, target volume, especially the gross tumor volume assessment by test, is it closer to surgical specimen than the CT or MRI. Also, all image modality overestimated the tumor expansion. Test CT have, uh, has several potential advantages than the other modalities, uh, modalities. First one, reduction in the size of the GTV reduction in the inter-observer variability in the GTV delineation, identifying parts of the GTV potentially requiring additional radiation dose. And the fourth, identifying the tumor extension which is missed by the CT or MRI. The gross tumor volume identified by the PET is dependent on the segmentation method used, especially visual interpretation, which is result in higher volume than the semi-automatic method. All methods show a smaller tumor volume on the PET CT compared to only the scan. Although, uh, also the PET CT often suggests tumor extension outside the CT based tumor volume. This is an example for uh, radiotherapy planning uh, using the FDG which is show significant reduction in the size of the GTV with respect to the finding of CT scan when compared to it. One of the important side effects of the radiotherapy is the radiation effect. When we will see, we should separate it from the recurrence or uh, side radiation effect. Diffuse FDG uptake in the radiation field is usually secondary to false radiation and inflammation. Any increase in the laryngeal or oropharyngeal uptake can be noted for prolonged periods after chemoradiation. Typically, this type of uptake is diffuse and of mild to moderate intensity. While if this uptake and intensity, which is, is seen as a focal and asymmetric uptake greater than the surrounding tissues, particularly the muscle, it's suspicious for residual or recurrent disease as long as it does not diffuse the anatomical structure. The third indication of the PET-CT in the head and neck is the monitoring of response to therapy. Humor radiation has been used to treatment of local regional advanced head and neck sequimal cell carcinoma. It has been accepted as a part of definitive treatment after surgery. SCT has significant advantage for treatment response assessment as it as a functional imaging approach 
and does not rely on morphological imaging. This is a patient, 63 years old man with right tonsil carcinoma, uh, stage uh, T3 N0 N0 treated with a new adjuvant tumor radiotherapy, uh, transaxial slice CT scan and FDG slice with a fused PET CT shows there is an increase and intense hypermetabolism in the right tonsil. After three months of treatment, there is this appearance of this intense hypermetabolism area, which is indicate and suggesting complete metabolic response to treatment. In general, any focal and asymmetrical FDG uptake with intensity greater than the surrounding normal tissue, in particular the muscle and the blood vessels should be considered suggestive of residual disease. On other hand, diffuse non-focal FDG uptake within the radiation field is usually an indicator of both radiation and inflammation. The authors support the use of HCT 12 weeks post treatment for assessment of residual or recurrent disease, whereas the potential clinical utility of PET for earlier response assessment, especially which is called PET in term during chemoradiotherapy, has not explored systematically during this period. The fourth indication, follow-up of the patient. The need and the frequency of post-treatment imaging assessment for patients treated for head and neck squamous cell carcinoma are still highly contro uh, controversial. It is unclear whether the patient with distant relapse but without symptoms benefit from early detection of the disease. Early detection of local regional recurrence may potentially improve survival by facilitating time for the salvage treatment. Overall, sensitivity and negative predictive value for local regional recurrence were higher using PET in a percentage. 92.5% and 94.8% respectively than the conventional imaging, which is 55% to 76.9% respectively. They concluded that the routine surveillance, the initial PET-CT scan should be performed within six months after completion of the treatment and the proper time for of the next routine PET CT for subclinical patients with initial negative PET CT results might be one year after the initial PET scan. The fifth indication is the prognosis. Pre treatment tumor FDG is an independent prognostic factor in meta analysis studies. If the low FDG uptake before treatment is correlated with better disease free survival, overall survival and local control. The sixth uh, indication, which is most important, cervical carcinoma of unknown origin. An unknown primary tumor of the neck is diagnosed when a patient presents with a neck metastasis, but no primary tumor is found. The treatment of unknown primary tumor can consist of three modalities. The first one, neck dissections, tonsillectomies, radiotherapy for all mucosal sites and both sides of the neck. According to several studies, FDG PET-CT is very helpful in localization of the primary tumor. The FDG PET-CT showed higher sensitivity, 69% for detection of occult primary tumors than the CT scan, which is uh, the percent of a 16%, or combined CT and MRI in patients with cervical metastasis from a non-primary pet, uh, a non-primary tumor. This is an example of this 70 years old man with metastatic neck mass, uh, especially if this is a lip node in the, of a non-primary, coronal and sagittal and transaxial CT scan, uh, pet CT and uh, fused uh, pet CT, show there is a lip node in the left uh, area of the neck. And also there is a hyper metabolism area in the left tonsil. And after the 
surgical removal of the tonsil of the left tonsil, the results of the uh, surgical histopathology demonstrate a primary tonsil tumor. This is uh, a summary of the talking. We should learn uh, about these important points, especially when the performance of the FDG PET is equivalent or superior to the CT and MRI in the initial staging of the disease. Distant metastasis in patients with head and neck are detected by FDG uh, with a greater sensitivity and specificity compared to the conventional CT or MRI. The NCC guidelines support and recommended the FDG for initial staging of oral cavity, oropharyngeal, hypopharyngeal, glottic, and supraglottic cancer, especially for stage three and stage four disease. This is an important topic, the contraindication. There is a relative contraindication. Uh, the first one is pregnancy for any diagnostic procedure in a female patient known or suspected to be pregnant. A clinical decision is necessary in which the benefits are weighted against the possible harm. The International Commission on Radiological Protection, ICRP, reports that for an adult patient, the administration of 259 MBQ, which is equal to 7 millicurie of FDG, results in an absorbed radiation dose of 4.7 M gray to non-gravid uterus. A pregnancy case may help with the decision provided the 10th day post ovulation should be done to know the patient pregnant or not. The second contraindication is the uh, relative contraindication is the breastfeeding. The ICRP does not recommend the interruption of a breastfeeding after FDG administration. Since little FDG is excreted in the milk, however, as the lactating breast accumulates the FDG, it is suggested that the contact between the mother and the child be limited for 12 hours after the injection of the FDG in order to reduce the radiation dose that the infant receives from the external exposure to radiation emitted by the mother. The third is the lack of co cooperation. The lack of the cooperation or inability to cooperate with the procedure may be relatively contraindication. We reach to the patient preparation before any pet CT for the head and neck. The main purpose of the patient preparation is to reduce the stressor uptake in the normal tissue, especially the kidneys, bladder, skeletal muscle, myocardium, and the brown fat. While maintaining and optimizing the tracer uptake in the surface structure, especially the tumor tissue, while at the same time keeping patient radiation exposure levels as low as reasonably posit, uh, possible, depending on the uh, la, uh, ALARA criteria. Before reporting to the nuclear medicine center, non diabetic patients should not consume any food, simple carbohydrate or liquid other than a plain and a flavored water for at least four hours prior to start of the FDG fat CT. Type one, an insulin dependent type two diabetic patients should not have insulin injection for at least four hours before the FDG injection. And they should be made to achieve normal glycemic values to prior to the study. While the type 2 non-insulin dependent diabetic patient should continue to take oral medication to control their blood sugar level. The second, the blood glucose level should be checked before any FDG administration. The tumor uptake of the FDG is reduced in hyperglycemic status. Most institutions reschedule the patient if the blood glucose level is greater than 150 to 200 milligram per deciliter. Reducing the serum glucose level by administrating insulin can be considered, but the administration of the FDG should be delayed for our after the insulin administration and recheck the glucose level. If it's decreased, we can administer the FDG. The third 
recommendation when a diagnostic CT scan with intravenous contrast agent enhancement is to be performed as a part of the FDG PET CT indications and contraindications and the restrictions have been assessed by the quantified physician. Medications that interact with the intravenous contrast agents like metformin for the treatment of diabetes and the relevant medical history, as for example, compromised renal function, adverse reaction or claustrophobia should be taken in this concentration. The radiopharmaceutical which is used is the FDG. The activity, the minimum recommended administration activity and bed acquisition duration for each bed position must be adjusted. Therefore, one may decide to apply higher activity and reduce the duration of the study or preferably to use a reduced activity and increase the study duration, thereby keeping the ALARA principles in our mind as well. There are different methods for determining the minimum FDG administration dose in adults. One, which is called one specification, is 3.7 MDQ per kg, which is equal to 0.1 mmHg per kg. While the other specifications include the time per bed, position, and patient weight. The time or uptake period for FDG, uh, the recommendation interval between the FDG administration and the starting of the acquisition is 60 minutes. After injection, the following of the injection is important for the patient to rest quietly during this period as excessive motion may result in muscle uptake. Talking should be avoided to minimize the vocal cord activity. Patient may go to toilet while waiting, preferably more than 30 minutes after injection. Patient should empty their bladder five minutes before starting the FDG study. The physiological FDG distribution can be seen in some extent in variable tissue, including the tonsils and at the base of the tongue due to physiological accumulation in the lymphatic tissues of the valderis ring. Non-pathological hypermetabolism can be identified in salivary glands, muscles of the floor of the mouth and ocular extrinsic uh, cervical or mastectomy muscles. The second uptake is the cervicothoracic brown fat. Cervicothoracic brown fat is more uh, is observed more often in the young patients and when uh, ambient temperature is low. Brown fat uptake is often identified by matching region of the fat attenuation on the CT and uh, with the PET CT fused region. The most important when we see in the vol volumetric uh, maximum intense projection coronal and the transaxial slices, there is a symmetrical intense, uh, very symmetrical uh, and very intense FDG uptake in the cervical thoracic brown fat. This is indication of uh, physiological uptake in the brown fat. Also, there is a bilateral uptake in the vocal cord can be observed when the patient speaks during the uptake interval after FDG administration. With a greater uptake of the healthy cord as compensation of for the contralateral recurrent nerve paralysis. The lift node anatomy of the head and neck is complex and must be well known to correctly interpret the findings on the PET CT. An increase in FDG uptake can be seen in the granulation tissue, as for example, in the healing wound, infection, and other inflammatory processes, as well as in the benign salivary gland tumor, like for example, in the biomorphic adenoma and Warfen's tumor, which may present high uptake of FDG. A detailed description of pitfalls and situations that can lead to false positive like benign processes that can show an increased uptake or false negative uh, FDG interpretation has been published. When we compare the PET-CT to the other modalities, the PET is more sensitive than cystamibi, tetraphosmine, or thallium. The specificity is comparable. 
However, the cystamibi or citraposmin combined with CT is comparable to test results. When we see in the sensitivity, the test sensitivity 100 and the specificity 96, while the uh, uh, technetium cystamibi 73 and technetium citraposmin 64 sensitivity person. The sensitivity and the specificity compared with the MRI in the detection of the recurrent disease, the test is more and more and more sensitivity than the MRI, which has reached uh, sensitivity 100, while in the MRI 62 percent. The role of the test CT in the detection of the parotid lesion. Test cannot distinguish between the benign and malignant parotid warping the tumor and the pleomorphic adenomas can have high uptake in this situation. High-grade salivary gland tumors seem to have more uptake than the lower-grade tumors, but there is substantial overlap. In addition, some malignant parotid lesions, such as adenocystic carcinoma, low-grade mucoepidermoid carcinoma, and necrotic sequimacer carcinoma, have minimal LDG uptake. So, in a meta-analysis, the pooled risk of malignancy of focal parotid incidental uptake was 9.6% in all detected lesions. However, in patients with head and neck cancer, melanoma, lymphoma, or FDG cervical lymph nodes, there are a higher odds of that the focal parotid uptake represents metastasis. Head and PET CT may be superior to CT scan for staging patients with non salivary gland malignancy. This is an example of a biomorphic adenoma, which is shown in the axial and test CT demonstrate a biopsy proven uh, from this increased uptake uh, in the left parotid gland with mild FDG uptake shows pleomorphic adenoma. And this is another example in 51 years old male with biopsy proven pleomorphic adenoma in the right parotid gland in the test and it used by CT. Also in the transaxial CT scan show, there is uh, intense lesion of, uh, uh, in the contrast, the uh, lesion in the right part of the gland. Also, uh, cystic neck mass PET may not be accurate in identifying malignancy in adults with cystic neck mass. Regarding the data interpretation and reporting, fusion imaging image must be evaluated using the SUV scale in the axial, coronal, and sagittal planes, as well as the maximum intensity projection. Image for review in the 3D sign mode. FDG image with and without attenuation correction should be available for review. Quantitative information with respect to the size and FDG uptake can be retrieved image data should be stored on approved pack systems and in DICOM formation. Thank you for listening to our presentation. If, there, if you have any questions, it's my pleasure to send it on the following link. And uh, thank you very much.